Greetings! In this video, we're going to be talking about binary units and bit representation. Specifically, now that we know how to count in binary, and now that we know how to convert between one and the other, we're going to talk about the various types of binary units, and then we're going to introduce this idea of being able to assign unique binary values to various types of information so that we can encode it. If that doesn't make sense yet, don't worry, we're going to go through all of it. So, the first thing we need to go through is some binary terminology. Consider this series of binary digits. I'm really lazy, I don't like using the term binary digits. So in computer science, one binary digit is what we refer to as a bit. Also, there's a lot of bits here. So sometimes we don't, bits aren't very convenient. So a set of eight bits is what we call a byte. So in this particular example, let's look at how many bits there are. One, two, three, four, and there are six groups of four, so that should be 24 bits. And then if I look at how many bytes there are, there are three groups of eight bits. So that should be three bytes. So the, the magic number in this case is eight. Remember that there are eight bits in a byte. You should be good to go. Now we're going to talk about binary versus decimal units. And the important thing to remember here is that they are approximately equal to each other, but not quite. So let's say, for example, kilo. Kilo in the chemistry world and the physics world means a thousand, right? You're used to that idea. But in computer science, we don't ever use a thousand exactly. We like to use powers of two. So two to the 10 just happens to be 1024. So we say that kilo in computer science terms is 1024. All right. Mega in the physics and metric world is a million. But again, we don't like doing that. So it turns out a few times, 1024 by 1024, you end up with approximately a million with a little change. And it ends up being two to the 20. So for us, mega means two to the 20. After mega is giga. Giga is normally a billion, but we call it 2 to the 30. Terra is uh, a trillion. We call that 2 to the 40. And right now, you've heard of terabytes. Uh, after terabytes, there would be like petabytes, uh, exabytes, and so on and so forth. If I want to convert between these units, the magic number to remember is 1024. So, in one megabyte, there are 1024 kilobytes. In one gigabyte, there are 1,024 megabytes. So if you ever want to find out, if you want to, if you have kilobytes and you want to figure out how many megabytes it is, so if you're going this way down the, the table, then you're dividing by 1024. If you ever want to go up the table, if I figure I have one megabyte and I need to figure out how many kilobytes that is, you multiply it by 1024. So going this way, it's multiply. Going this way, it's divide. All right. So let's do an example here. Uh, if you go to Best Buy and you buy a 512 gigabyte hard drive, if you ever go on your computer and look, uh, you would not see 512 gigabytes exactly. It'd be a slightly smaller unit. And we'll, we're going to actually explain it to you. So the reason is, is because the, so the hard drive manufacturer uses the metric units. So now they're saying it's 512, what, billion bytes? So if we want to convert this to computer science units, we would say if we had 512 billion bytes, we want to convert that to gigabytes. What we would do, and remember, we're going from bytes up the scale, right? So bytes to kilobytes, and then to megabytes to gigabytes. And each time we do that, we're dividing by 1024. So there's one kilobyte has 1024 bytes, one megabyte has 1024 kilobytes, one gigabyte has 1024 megabytes. And when we do this conversion, we end up with 476.83 gigabytes, which is probably closer to what you will see on your hard drive. So now you have an opportunity to practice. Um, go ahead and you may have to rewind the video or use the handout we provided you. Uh, but I'm going to give you some time to work on these problems and we'll go through the answers in a minute. All right, let's go through them. So let's say that I have 1,268 kilobytes and I want to find out how many bits there are. The magic numbers are 1024 and 8. Remember that. So if I want to convert from kilobytes to bytes, there are 1,024 bytes per kilobyte. So that gets me to, what is it? So that gets me to bytes. And then there are 8 bits per byte. So that makes sense. I'm going from kilobytes to a smaller unit of measurement. So my number ends up being bigger. Here, I'm going the opposite. I'm going from megabytes to terabytes. A terabyte is much bigger than a megabyte. So I should expect my answer to be smaller. So if I have 42 megabytes, and I know that I'm going to go up the scale, it's gigabytes next, so one gigabyte has 1024, and then from gigabyte to terabyte is 124, 1024, and I end up with a really, really small number. And that makes sense. 
Now we're going to talk about bit representation. And the general idea of bit representation is that given a unique set of things, I want to assign each one its own unique binary value. And you'll see why we're going to do that in the following video. So let's say, for example, I have six ducks. How can I assign each one a unique binary value? So I need to figure out how many bits I need to encode each one with its own unique value. Well, let's say I have one bit. I can create two unique values, zero and one. If I have two bits, I can create four unique values, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And with three bits, I can do eight unique values. So I hope you're noticing a pattern. Every time I add a bit, I'm basically doubling the number, number of unique values that I can generate. And we can actually formalize this with math, that given b bits, the number of things I can represent is 2 to the b. So it's your turn. Um, if I had four bits, for example, it would just be... 2 to the 4, which is 16. If I had 5 bits, it would be 2 to the 5, which is 32. And 8 bits happens to be 256. So you could already see the answer, but we're going to show you a little bit more math and we can go back to the original problem. So to represent n objects, instead of going 2 to the b, I have to use logarithmic math. So here, log base 2 of n will tell me how many bits are needed. So I could do like log base 2 of 6 to solve our duck problem. Uh, your calculator can't actually do this, so when you put it in the calculator, you have to do uh, the change of base formula, which is just log base 10 of, the, uh, of n divided by log base 10 of 2. The important thing to remember when you do it on the calculator is that you have to just round up, always. So 2.5 rounds up to 3, and then 5.1 actually rounds up to 6, right? But there's an easier way for us to do it. Practically speaking, we can just kind of guess and check. So for example, 2 to the 1, 1 bit's not enough. 2 bits isn't enough. I can only represent 4 of the ducks. But if I use 3, I have uh, I can do um, 8 unique values. I only have 6 ducks. That's the smallest number of bits. And it's OK that I'm not using all of these unique values. I'm just trying to find the smallest number of bits to do to represent the, the objects that I have. All right? So this concept is going to play a key role in the following video, so take a minute, digest it, and I will see you in a bit.